live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Palo Alto for theCUBE, special coverage of two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Mobile World Congress 27. We're doing it here in Palo Alto, covering what's happening in Barcelona with folks on the ground. We've got analysts, we've got reporters, and we have friends there phoning in and sharing their commentary, certainly on Twitter as well. And we're doing it from inside the, our new studio in Palo Alto, and we're going to break it down. As their day ends, we're going to be analyzing and discussing the future implications of what all, it all means, teasing out the top news, giving our opinion and our commentary and reaction to all the breaking news. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. My next guest is Willie Liu, who is a Facebook friend who I've been having conversations with. It's great to meet in person. He's a wireless guru going back to his PhD in the 90s, now chairman of the Palo Alto Research Group, uh, extensive experience in, in dealing with fixed wireless, mobile wireless, but more importantly, creating the technologies with industry to understand what's it going to take to invent the future. Willie, great to have you inside the studio. Thank you very much, John. Yeah. One of the great things about having the Palo Alto studio is while everyone's out in Barcelona right now having dinner, probably going out for the evening, <laughs> we get to sit inside the studio and talk about what they did today. Yes. Um, so the big story um, inside of Mobile World Congress in Barcelona was obviously the devices. You're seeing BlackBerry making a comeback, Nokia you know, pumping their new muscles, bringing back the old Nokia phone and rolling out their new ones. Huawei bringing in their, their Apple killer. They want to go down, up and down the stack. So certainly the device-centric you know, jewelry, if you will, the phone, the, the, the eye candy, the VR, you know, the AR, the virtual reality, but also 5G. Um, Intel, Qualcomm, Ericsson, Nokia, all the major telcos are rolling out essentially what they are calling 5G and beyond, which is essentially not just wireless, but an end-to-end -end network to be the new fabric of wireless, uh, not only for the devices in the phones, but the devices being the people in the cars and the factories and the cities and the entertainment. This is an area that you have a lot of work in at a technical level. So I want to spend this segment talking about the picture of the future, right? You know, obviously we, we need that next step up function of architecture. We need that next network. We need those next devices. That's something that you're thinking a lot about. What's your picture? What's the future look like for you? Yeah, uh, thanks, John. Uh, yeah. I, I'm the, the wireless mobile system architect for almost 25 to 30 years. So from my point of view, uh, because I'm the, I'm the technical guy, uh, from a technical point of view, when you talk about mobile communications there, normally we have three factors we have to trade off, compromise each other, okay? The first is high-speed transmission. The second one is mobility, free mobility. The third one is capacity. Make sure capacity, right? Make sure that the operator make money, right? So before, previously, in the last 20 years, 30 years, our phones from the step by step, from 2G, which is GSM or CDMA, the basic CDMA, which is IS95, to the 3G, which is WCDMA, to the 4G, which is OFDMA, including LTE. And, the, and these phones uh, basically is still focused on one issues, even mobility issue, even high speed issue. But in the future, in the 4G, uh, 5G, 6G, whatever, you know, we need a uh, very high speed, very high speed, one giga, uh, beyond over there. We also need a uh, mobility, free mobility, right? We also make sure everyone make money, the operator make money, yeah, right? That's and so, one. so how to, how to, we, we, we want to three, we want to mobility, high speed, capacity, we every, everything we need. And then single one standard is not going to work. Because if you want to pick up LT or very high speed, you lose the mobility. If you pick up the free mobility, you lose the bandwidth. So the issue, that's the issue way 20 years ago when I do the PhD and, then, and then when I was Stanford professor, I was a consulting professor at Stanford, we started the open wireless access. It means converge a multiple standard together, converge the Wi-Fi, LTE, and the broadband access mm -hmm. together in the same device. So when you have a Wi-Fi, go to Wi-Fi which is very high speed, mm -hmm. can be very, very high speed in the future, right? And then you go to the highway, move very fast there, you cannot get Wi-Fi, but you can get LTE or 3G or 2G, that's fine. So that's the research we are working on the open wireless access or open wireless uh, uh, architecture yep. or OWA. And then the node the, the map is from TDMA, CDMA, OFDMA to OWA. Okay, that's the technical point side. And then for the, for the, for the 
device design side, my picture is for the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, which is very clear, okay? Before that, in the last 20 years, everybody that mobile phone is still a carrier central mobile phone. It means when I have a mobile phone, it's at and it's at and mm -hmm. It's locked at and or it's at and phone, right? And the right now from last year to this year, we are on a very important transition from the carrier central phone to a user central phone. You probably a couple of companies, Google or uh, other companies, they're working on the, on, the, on, the, on the virtualization, mobile virtualization, right? Means what? Means a user can pick up different operators on the way, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this phone, if, if I don't have a signal, <laughs> I, have a I, I don't have a T-Mobile signal, I can use at and to get LTE. Yeah. And if I don't have at and I can use Flyzen. So we are on the way from the carrier-centric to a user-centric so let's, moment. Let's, let's stop right there, because I really okay. think you're onto something really important. And I think yeah. this is, there's some history to look at. I mean, if you look at wireless, I agree, this is a very carrier-centric, yeah. and for the consumers out there, you can think of just the basic uh, concepts of most people's experience. Yeah. I want to unlock my phone, right? These are kind of known, known terms of consumers, whether it's my kids or adults. Yes. I don't want to be stuck to the carrier yes. on their plan. I want to move my phone around. But that's just on the service. Now you want to decouple it further to the person. So take a car. Okay. I might want to have a relationship with my car. Yeah. As a, if I'm going to be never buy a car, I might use autonomous cars or Uber or other services. Yeah. And I get into the car and I need personalization. Yes. So this is a user centric thing. It's a super important point. Yeah. But now we're stuck, still stuck, in my opinion, yeah. in siloed telco stacks. Meaning, I'm stuck to the carrier. I have limited services, and now I want to shift that to better performance. I mean, you can't look any further than hyper-convergence or converged infrastructure yeah. on the data centers, yes. storage, networking, combining. Mm. So are you taking that same approach to say that you think wireless will converge in? Is that the, the idea? Yes, when your wireless converge in, I mean, uh, for that, take examples, Wi-Fi, LTE, and uh, converge together. So your phone basically is running on a Wi-Fi. In, actually, in the, in the priority order, Wi-Fi first, Wi-Fi first, and the second is LTE, and then maybe 3G is the second one there. So, and, and, and then if you have Wi-Fi, you go Wi-Fi, and if you have a if car, that the car can be, also can be a micro base station, okay, to connect the, the Wi-Fi, LTE together, and distribute to the p passengers in the car. So this is also we can for the future we can mobile office project. Right? Mm -hmm. you can, I can stay in the car and the car itself is a, is a subway station and they, and, and they connect to each other. They they also for the okay let's do that uh, let's talk about the future picture. Okay, in the next five years, okay, there's a couple of companies working already working on the mobile Wi-Fi network. So it means if I'm living in the Palo Alto there, I'm moving around in, the, in my neighborhood in the Palo Alto. I don't have I don't even AT and T Verizon operator, I can have a mobile service because I can share all neighbors Wi-Fi network together as a mobile protocol. Then I can move, I can hike, I jogging your house, my house through there. We can share the Wi-Fi together and we call, we divide the Wi-Fi into the home Wi-Fi and then visit the Wi-Fi. We can rent the service to outside. So this is called community mobile network based on Wi-Fi. That's the next five years picture. How does that happen? I mean, I just, I mean, first of all, I believe in that's a great philosophy. Yeah. And you're starting to see Xfinity do that with their, with their current, yes. current uh, Wi-Fi to kind of create a little metro neighborhood network. Yeah. How, that's really hard to pull off because there's security concerns and um, is, it, is it viable in the next five years? Do you think that is even doable? What has to happen to make that happen? I think, uh, uh, I, I, I think this is going to be uh, not a major issue because Wi-Fi still have a lot of bandwidth, right? And you can, you can, you can exchange bandwidth with a security issue there. So Wi-Fi is more easy to the security than LTE. Because LTE for a cellular mobile network, the spectrum is very expensive, right? So that's why we cannot use a lot of overheads for security. So as I, I, I always say, the most security way is Wi-Fi than LTE. Because LTE, the, the, the data, right? When you open it, there's no much, over, overhead available for secure incubation, whatever issue there. So Wi-Fi, you can- So they're maximizing their signal for performance, yes. not security. Yeah, not security. And the Wi-Fi, you can take it like 40%, 30%, the overhead load for the security, and then it's very secure. So, so that's not an issue. That's why, that's the five, next five moment, okay? And then beyond that, when the, when the mobile Wi-Fi neighborhood is, 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 is built, right? Then we're back to the, to, the, uh, to the traditional cellular operator networks there, we converge together, then user, for the next 10 years, after 10 years, user can pick up 
his preferred operators as he like. For example, if I'm in Palo Alto, and then at and give me a, a good package, right? It, it offer, and I p click my at and it's go to at and mm -hmm. And I back to the Cupertino. Yeah. And Cupertino. It's like network hopping. Yeah. It's like not radio hop, frequency hopping, it's network hopping. Yes, yeah, right, right, right. But, so, but I still need a converging network of infrastructure together. So let's take it back to Mobile World Congress. So right now, the current president is that they're painting the picture of a 5G world yes. where autonomous vehicles, entertainment, smart cities, and a smart home are all being powered by an end-to-end -end from the network to the edge. Yes. Software and capabilities from silicon software to device. Yes. So that's cool, I, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Now, is 5G truly the enabler of that? 5, 6G, is the, is the wireless the enabler for this, um, in your view, I mean, in your picture of the future? What role does wireless play in creating this new fabric? In, yeah, I, in, I think, yeah, I think, I think uh, it's, 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 it's very, very much possible because when I say when we converge the different wireless solutions together, then you have more space to focus on one direction, you focus on very high speed. We can one giga, two giga, even 10 giga is enough, right? Mm -hmm. On the other side, we increase the mobility issue, right? And then on the, on the, on the other side, we converge on the operator side. In the future, I mean, AT&T, uh, uh, Verizon, it's not, they're not going to just provide the, the, uh, the cellular mobile access early. They want to provide more service around this 5G, 6G new business model, right? Yeah. The traditional business model just provide the radio, the handphone access. But in future, this operator is going to have provided more service, service-oriented platform. Is that consistent, that service business model? Is that viable in your vision of the future? What is, or, or let me ask differently. Yeah. What is the business model for the operator in your vision of this multi-network world? Yeah. What are they doing? What kind of services are they delivering? I, I think uh, in the future, very important service around 10 years, around time frame, uh, it's a very important service is called mobile virtualization service. So in the future, Google can run mobile service, but they're working with AT&T and, uh, and, and, and the Verizon it's operator. It's like MVNO on steroids, basically. It's all doing pipe management. Yeah, and then, and then uh, uh, let's say, uh, for example, Google, they will contract with the AT&T for how much bandwidth every year, probably 1P, or yeah. large bandwidth. <laughs> and then AT&T provides this bandwidth to the Google, right? And then AT&T can do other services also. So AT&T doesn't save a lot of cost in the individual marketing. You know, right now yeah. the operators spend a lot of money for the marketing, right? But, but, but later, they can cut off this cost. Google can do marketing, right? So this is an economic yeah. reconfiguration. Yes. Okay, so here's the next question. In the, today's landscape of the marketplace, yeah. what would be bad behavior from your standpoint that would screw up that future? What would, what would be the, the signs that it's not going the right way in the ecosystem? Because part of the things that I'm seeing with things like Intel and, and uh, the, the big players is there's an ecosystem that needs to get agreement that to accelerate the future, there has to be a new model, a yes. new network. Yeah. What are some signs that are warning signs for you? You know, people holding on to a certain thing, certain technology. What would be a red flag for you if you look at the marketplace? What kind of activities would say, whoa, that's not good? Okay, I think it depends on, for the operator, I think it's not good. In the future, it's not good. You, you just focus on making money from the access size. <laughs> because in the future, access will be cheaper, 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 cheaper. So if at and just focus on access revenue, it's going to the red flag, okay? So you have to provide a total solution, right? And for the vendor side, you cannot support one single standards. Uh, you only support LT is going to be dangerous. Yeah. So you have to be open. So in the future, I, I think in the future, from, from my personal view, point of view, Comcast, at and or this com company, they are going to merge together because they want to provide a, a convergence solution, right? Yeah. So in the future, access will be cheaper, 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 cheaper. And then you have to they have another revenues from the other side. I wrote okay. a paper in 2001 called Broadband Starvation. Yes. And it was the, the beginning before Wi-Fi really hit, and then Wi-Fi hit, and um, you know, New York Times picked it up. It was one of those stories. But we talked about the starvation from America for more bandwidth. Obviously, even outside the U.S., you saw uh, accelerated uh, uh, bandwidth, broadband penetration. I called it Broadband Starvation because broadband starvation was in rural areas. So it always was limited by the actual physical connection. Yes. You know, the, the cable, the last mile. Yes. Yeah. We all know the history and the policy side of the Arbox and the, and the days of, um, you know, the telephone companies. But now Comcast and now AT&T, yeah. yeah. they're the fiber to the home. There's some, or the coax to the home. They, they bring in uh, off the street and terminate into the house. Wireless changes that. Um, is, there, is that a scenario where you see 
5G going where ultimately this notion of fiber to the home could be, you know, ancient uh, history or, because that always is still construction. You got to still trench. And you still got to yes. provision in the circuits to the homes. Yeah. You know, is wireless an opportunity there? And will that free up more yes. competition? Yeah. I think uh, uh, that's a big question and a big picture. Okay. I think uh, for my for for my uh, personal experience, when we design technology for the next ten years, fifteen years, uh, the very big picture you think about is very important. Is we are on the way to transition to transition from a mobile communication to a personal communication. So previously, the mobile communication personal communication you mean people centric? Yeah, people centric. So mobile communication previously we call mobile communication is a telecom term. It yeah. means just for connection. Just for information connection, yeah. right? But in the future, endpoint. That's it. Some, yeah, yeah. So, that's why. so we are on the way. Even some universities, they change the course from mobile communication to personal communication. Personal communication means everything is is personal. Yeah. Personal centric, right? Yes. So in a personal centric, so in the future, the operator, the the vendor, the provider, think about it. In the future, you're not you're not only provide an information connection early. You provide anything the person needed for his life, including health, security. Right, everything there. Transportation. Transportation I mean, could yeah. be all digital services. Uh, transportation, security, healthcare, and everything there. And uh, and then each application, we need a different, different requirements of the bandwidth, right? Especially for health, we need a uh, lots of lots of mm -hmm. video transmission, right? And this is going to, then that's why we need a, a wireline, a, a wireless network is converged together, and the wireless is still a lots of lots of. We we have to invent the word technology. convergence is back again. It's happening yes. everywhere. Willie, thanks so much for the commentary. I love this. This is consistent with uh, Wikibon's head of research, Silicon Angle head of research, Peter Burris, who was on our opening segment talking about not IoT only IoT Internet of Things, but IoT and P people Internet yes. of yes. people. Yes, and, 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 and think about IoT. Okay, what's the major technologies inside IoT? One is sensing technology, okay? The other one is wireless connection, right? You want to connect a billion, billion nodes together. So we need a multi-dimensional, different wireless technology, how to connect this billion, billion nodes together. That's also we need the wireless technology. I yeah. worry about that not happening because I think the telcos have been slow. And I think I'm seeing movement now with the telcos that now's the time yeah. to make their move. NFDs viable? Yes. And now their business model is somewhat emerging. The question is, will they be fast enough to move? That's the question. Yeah. I Are think, they? Yeah, that's also <laughs> my question, is because the moving, uh, 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 the virtualization, like from Google, they're moving very faster than a traditional telco, right? So telco have to change their way of thinking in the business, yeah. right? I think Google should be the telco. Take over the telcos. <laughs> that's, what, that's why I say, in the next five, 10 years, people just go to Google using Google account to, to get yeah. access to, to, the, to the phone, to the, to the mobile phone. They get a phone numbers from Google, right? Yeah. Uh, They're going to call it Apple World Congress, if Google World Congress, <laughs> Uber World Congress, if we yeah. don't. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but anyway, we still need uh, everybody work together. Yeah. It's like a different wireless standards, they converge together. And different company, they also want to converge together. And yeah. eventually, the target is very simple. It's the personal, it's a personal centric, user centric, the wireless world. That's the future. Willie Liu here from Palo Alto Research Inc. Here in Palo Alto, a good Facebook friend, guru in the wireless area, all the way down from back of his PhD days as a practitioner and, and inventing the future. Great vision. I agree with it 100%. I think Intel and all the big players would agree. An ecosystem of smart movement right now is critical. And I think it's a huge opportunity to, to tie it all together in, in IoT and people, a people-centric world. And congratulations on your work at, at the, um, the Wireless Mobile Congress that you started and also the Open, this Open Alliance, Open uh, Wireless Alliance. Congratulations. Willie Lou here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier. More exclusive coverage of Mobile World Congress here in Palo Alto after this short break.